morning everyone. A really warm welcome to you wherever you're watching from this morning. You're really welcome to worship with us. We do start this morning though with some sadness in our hearts over the events that we've seen in America and all over the world after the death of George Floyd and we stand with those who have suffered abuse and racism and we pray for God's peace to prevail and for God's justice to be done in our world today. On a brighter note, I'd like to show you this beautiful amaryllis, which was found on the church windowsill, looking really, really dead in the kitchen of the window of the church. And I decided to water it and look what has come. So even though things can look dead, there can be life there still. Now, uh, notices this week. Uh, we have our usual Wednesday at 2 house group and Saturday at 11 table talk on Zoom. Do contact us if you'd like to join those. And of course, we'll have coffee and chat after church today. Contact us if you'd like to join us on Zoom for those. You'd be very welcome. Two advance notices, uh, we have got our second quiz coming up on the 22nd of June. And also uh, we have had requested that we would do a songs of praise where we would have requests from you guys for songs or hymns of worship that you would like us to sing. And then we will have a Sunday evening on the 5th of July when we will just have a great time singing together and rejoicing. So if you have a favourite hymn or modern worship song that you would like us to sing, then please let us know by June the 15th so that we can get it all organised and put July the 5th in your diaries. So today we have come to worship and I invite you just to take a moment now to be still in the presence of Almighty God. Almighty God, we are grateful for being able to be in your presence this morning. And we pray that as we worship together, you would meet with us and we would know your presence with us. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us, we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn, which is a lovely Trinitarian hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Do join in singing with us.
have some fun thinking about different what things that are three things going into one. And my daughter loves milkshakes, so to make a milkshake, we get some strawberries, nice ones that I got from um, this stall outside the church on Tuesday mornings. Then we put in some milk, and a bit more than that, I think. And then just to make it extra special, we add some ice cream. So that's three different ingredients that are going into this. I like ice cream, so I'll add a bit more. And then I've got a fancy machine that does this. So this is going to be noisy, folks. Put it in there and then, are you ready? And then the three have become one. Except you won't come out with that lid off. <laughs> <laughs> the three have become one. Oh, there was a bit of a lump there. And we have a delicious milkshake. Okay, so another way of thinking about three things in one is H2O, which of course comes in the form of water that we get from our tap and we can use to drink, but also it comes in the form of ice. Some ice I've just taken out of my freezer. And of course, an ice block is also H2O, but it looks very different to a glass of water, doesn't it? And then the third way that we see H2O is in the form of steam. When the kettle boils, we see steam rising, or from a pan, we see steam rising. So all of these things, the ice, the water, and the steam, are all the same thing. They are all H2O, but they are very, very different in the ways that we see them. So another illustration of three things in one is a type of chord known as a triad, where you play a bottom note, a middle note, and a top note, and sum them together, you get... I hope you enjoyed those illustrations, but more seriously, the Trinity is what we believe in, and so we're going to join together now in the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one from whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe and trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we've just declared our faith, we realise that often we don't live up to our faith as maybe we should. And so we're going to come now to a time of confession where we say sorry to God for the ways in which we failed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city and you weep over the sin and suffering of our world today. On our city and world, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord God, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness, racism and abuse. We repent of these in our lives and in our world. On us and our world, Lord God, have mercy. Lord God, have mercy. Lord Holy Spirit, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner, bring conviction to those who need it, and forgive us our sins. Grant us peace. Lord Holy Spirit, have mercy. Lord Holy Spirit, have mercy. 
Amen. And may the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 17, and then from 28 to 31. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breath of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales, and the hills in a balance. Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord, or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him? And who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge, or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Do you know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, and he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today's sermon is about mysteries. Mysteries are things we can't understand. So does that mean we're not going to talk about them? No. Does it mean we'll never fully understand them? Yes. We are finite, flawed human beings who cannot understand the marvels of God. We haven't got the capacity to understand the godness of God. But we can know his love and we can be in relationship with him. I've got one more illustration I'm going to use. And this is using this candle. It's one candle, but it's got three wicks. And like all the illustrations, it's not perfect, but it can help us to think about um, the Trinity. So, the first wick we light reminds us of God the Father, God the Creator, who has made all things, as we heard in our reading. And we can know him in relationship only through the second person of the Trinity, who is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came as a human being so that we could understand more of what this awesome creator God is like. And it is only through God the, Fa God the Son that we can understand God the Father. And then of course the third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, who we remembered last week when we celebrated Pentecost, we remembered his coming. And the Holy Spirit is God living in each one of us. And so we know that God is an awesome creator God, but we understand more of what he's like through Jesus, his human son. And then we understand more of him 
by his Holy Spirit that lives within our hearts and lets us know God's presence in us and through us. One candle, three wicks. One God in three persons. That's the Trinity. It's unbe unbelievably complicated, but it's true. In Isaiah 55, the Lord declares, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God, we can never fully understand him. But our passage from Isaiah helps us to put all of this in perspective. God is bigger and more awesome and amazing than we can ever understand. It tells us that he's measured seas, he's weighed mountains, he's held the earth's fabric in his hand. Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct him as his counsellor? Who has taught God anything or showed him how to do things? This God who created everything we know, everything we see, everything we can't see, all those things that we can't understand. This is the God who is Trinity. This is the God who is three in one. This is the God who is beyond our understanding. You see, we are finite and God is infinite. We are limited mortals, but God is unlimited divinity. We are human and God is well, God is God. Then in verse 17, 15 to 17, it goes on and compares humans to God. We've seen this week in the news some nations who think they are great. We've seen superpowers vying against one another in various ways. Leaders of nations declaring their power. Verse 15 says, but surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket, like dust on the scales. And verse 23, he brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. There are leaders in the world who perhaps have too much power. There are authorities in some countries who misuse their power, as we have seen in the tragic case of George Floyd. But actually, no matter how great they think they are, all are nothing compared to the God who made the universe. As we thought a few weeks ago, Christians are called to obey the authorities as far as we can with integrity. We certainly need to pray for those in positions of power. They really need it. But we also need to hold them to account. And in some cases that may involve peaceful protests such as the one that's happening in Nottingham Market Square today. We're never called to be violent, to take a violent revenge, but we are called to stand with those who suffer and to stand up for what is right and stand against those who would do wrong, who would mistreat and abuse people and to stand with our brothers and sisters who have suffered. God is far above all these rulers, all these nations. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Verses 16 and 17 go on to talk about uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals for burnt offerings. The people of this time thought that burnt offerings on altars were a good way to please God. But he tells them that even all, if all the amazing cedar Lebanon trees were burnt to make a huge fire, and even if all the animals in the whole country were used for burnt offerings, it wouldn't be enough. It still wouldn't make them acceptable in almighty God's eyes. Before him, the nations are as nothing. So at this point, you may well be thinking, well, if leaders and nations are nothing before God, what hope have we got? Well, let's turn to the second part of the passage, one of my favourite passages. This God, who is everlasting, who is the creator of all, who never grows weary or tired. This God, whose understanding no one can fathom, 
So we won't or and can't ever fully understand what it means that God is Trinity. But this God, who has all this power and strength, gives his strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. I'm guessing there might be quite a few people out there who are feeling weary, weak. And it's not surprising after all these weeks of uncertainty and worry and fear. And I know that whoever we are, even youths, it says, grow tired and weary. And I know that our children and young people have suffered in this. Whether you're missing school, whether you're going back to school, whether you're missing your education, whether you're struggling with homeschooling, certainly missing your friends. It's hard, isn't it? It's tough for young people as well as adults. We are all missing this time. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. It's not an easy time for any of us. Young people, old people, parents, families, people living alone, people working, people not working. The list could go on. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Our God is so amazing, so awesome, so magnificent that we cannot hope to fully understand his Trinitarian nature. But he's so amazing, the creator of everything, the source of all being, never wearying in strength. And it is he who gives hope and renews our strength. Nations may be as nothing to him, but individual people are precious to him. You are precious to him. He doesn't want pomp and ceremony. He doesn't want the acclaim of nations, but he does want the individual love of individual people. And that's you. He wants you to put your hope in him. He wants you to know his strength in your life. And if you don't know what that means, then please ask us. We'd love to share the good news of Jesus with you and help you to understand more of how you can know God's strength and God's love in your life. Whoever you are, wherever you are this morning, there is an awesome God, powerful and strong, too amazing for us to understand. And this God loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to earth to live and die and rise again so you could know God, be in relationship with him, his spirit living inside you when you invite him in so that when you hope in the Lord, you will see your strength renewed. Let's pray. So Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Almighty God, we thank you for your power in this world and we thank you for your presence with us and pray that you would help each one of us today to know your presence with us and the strength that you give to us when we are weary. Thank you, almighty God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. As we sing the song, Who Can Know? This speaks of the wonder of creation and the wonders of our creator and the things that he knows that are just way beyond our understanding. So picking up on those words from Isaiah, let's worship together. Sweet the time. 
last of every mountain, who has walked the mysteries of the deep, who has laid the earth on its foundations, and who conducts the waves upon the seas. I stand in
Let us pray. On this Trinity Sunday, we have come before the Lord to offer our praise and adoration. You, Lord, are God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ, the Saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the Spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed, one God, eternal Trinity, being near to us, the people formed in your image, and fill the world with the fire of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who reached across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan, Roman and Jews, who offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to captives, help us to break down the barriers in our community and in our world. Enable us to see reality of racism and bigotry and free us to challenge and uproot it from ourselves, our society and our world. Give us gifts of humility and generosity of spirit to recognize in all people the face of our Saviour Jesus and to practice his commandment to love one another. We remember today the death of George Floyd who was killed in Minneapolis by those who are called to uphold the law and protect citizens. And we pray for his family and ask for harmony and peace among persons of all colours, origins and abilities. We ask you to help communities heal for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Prayers. Teach us to see clearly that we, your children, are more li alike than we are different. Give us strength and courage to speak out against injustice and to work for the transformation of unjust systems that keep some in bondage. In our efforts to dismantle racism, we understand that we struggle not merely against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, institutions and systems that keep racism alive by letting some believe that they are superior and others inferior. Help us to create a church and a nation that embraces the hopes and fears of oppressed people where we live as well as those around the world. Heal our family, Lord, and make us one with you in union with our Lord Jesus and empowered by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. COVID-19 and the restrictions of lockdown has been difficult for many of us, but there has been a revival of community interactions that we didn't value before. Let us pray that the Lord of all will continue in us a real spirit of community in our villages and towns, our cities and suburbs. God of friendship and hope, in our community, may we cherish new friendships and new neighbours, as well as sustaining long-standing relationships. Your apostles blaze the trail of bringing the good news. May we, through hospitality and courtesy, witness to the love that you have showed us in sending your Son, who made all things new and rescued our relationship with you, God of mercy and restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for those that are thriving and those which have lost a sense of direction. We give thanks for our church and its people and gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us through its life. 
we ask you to open wide our hearts that we may welcome the stranger and share our faith with others. Open wide our minds that we may receive new truth and understand your will. Open wide our doors that as we have, as we have come into, into worship, so we may go out with you to the service of the world. Open wide our lives that through discipline and prayer we may experience your power in daily living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. A prayer for those suffering from the COVID-19 virus and any form of illness. Healing, loving Lord, be with those who are suffering through sickness, distress or depression. Calm and comfort them and give them the peace only you can provide. May those who care for, the, uh, care for and minister to them be given strength and patience. May the medical and nursing professions be graced with a concern for the whole person, just as your son always was when healing the sick and forgiving sins. May hope bring healing and healing bring wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. And the collect for Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your, your will, will be, be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the, the glory are, are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now please join us in praising Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in song.
worshipping with us today. Let us finish with a prayer of blessing. May God the Father judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all you love and all those in need this day and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, have a great week and we'll see you next week.